Okay, so in this video today I'm going to talk about how easy it was to get my job as a environmental engineer. I'm going to tell you right now, it was not easy, okay? It was not easy, it was a very long and difficult process to get my current job as an environmental engineer. But that was back in the day, I don't really know how the economy and the market is right now, so we'll just see how that compares to your current situation. So first off, I have to give you some background about myself, that way you can kind of see where I'm coming from. And that way you can see how it relates to your situation. Maybe we're the same, maybe we're different. But back in the day, <laughs> feels weird when I'm saying that. But back in 2016, I graduated with a bachelor's in chemistry. So I had a whole really scientific background. After 2016, I went on to my master's program in environmental engineering. So I completely switched. I went from a pretty hard science major to a engineering major. And that whole learning period was difficult to transition to. After I graduated with my engineering degree back in 2017, I actually worked in a cancer research uh, field. It was mostly because I had so much experience in lab, so during my chemistry years and my bachelor's degree, I worked in a lab and I had lots of research experience there. And then even during my master's, I didn't have to write a thesis, but I did some research work, and that was really focused in a research lab too. So I had a lot of lab experience. And really, after I graduated with my engineering degree, I worked in a lab. And that was because they really looked at the whole background, and they realized that I had more lab experience than actual engineering. So the lab took me in as like a lab technician or like a researcher. So that was my first job. I worked in a cancer research lab. Lots of lab experience there. But then eventually that project closed, so I got laid off. And that was probably the most depressing moment of my life, really. So after the layoff, I applied to like 300 or more jobs. I had, I know it's 300 or more jobs because I had like a whole Excel sheet that pretty much lists all the job applications that I had, all the websites and everything because I had to fill that out when I filed for unemployment. And so in the meantime, while I was laid off, that was when I actually studied for the engineering training certificate. I know I should have started earlier, back when I actually graduated with my master's degree. I should have gotten and taken that test right away, but I was sort of pretty lazy and just like realized that because I already had this lab job maybe I don't really even need to go towards this engineering field but then you know life happened and then just don't be complacent with life. So that layoff really opened my eyes it did take like a horrible experience like that event for me to realize that you know life isn't always gonna stay consistent and it's always not gonna be good. So always try to improve yourself and always try to you know take what you can before you get like complacent and lazy but in the end I took the test and you know, I studied really hard for it. I passed my first time and then now I got my EIT. And it was probably because of that layoff that made me really, really like motivated. Like, it made me upset about myself, made me really angry at myself. So I sort of pushed myself really hard to try to pass the first time. And you know, good thing I did. Just that motivation, that self-drive made me pass the first time. Hopefully you guys pass the first time too. But overall, I applied to like 300 plus jobs and this is where I was pretty desperate, so I applied to like all jobs. I applied to well, any job that was within my field. So I applied to like lab jobs as well. But then I did know that I want to become an environmental engineer. That was what I studied for. You know, I spent so much, like $24,000 or $25,000 to go to my master's, get the degree. So why would I go back to being a lab assistant when I spent so much money trying to become an environmental engineer? And so that was what I wanted to do. So that was why I like pushed myself so hard to get this EIT. So my end goal after all of this was to become an environmental engineer. That's why I took the test. That's why I did so much for this. So the sad thing about me, I don't know if it applies to you or you know maybe in other different states too, but I applied for 300 jobs. It took me six months. So pretty much I only had six months worth of unemployment benefits. So I took the whole period. And it wasn't because I wanted to. It's because no company really offered that you know position right away so there's no specific company that I'm trying to say that you can apply for and you'll immediately get in it really all depends on your experience and each person is you know different they all have different experiences they have different you know, ways of conveying messages and going through the interview because literally every single interview is pretty subjective to the interviewer so maybe they like you maybe they like your personality maybe they don't like you and not everything is guaranteed no matter your certification or your education so yeah, I got my EIT, I got my master's, but that doesn't mean that they'll take me in right away because maybe I don't have the experience. Or maybe they don't like my personality, they don't think I'd be a good fit in that culture, so there's really no guarantee that you'll get anything, no matter what you have. And just based off of what I learned from experience, I'm pretty sure 
when you apply with your resume, because everyone has to apply through online now, they look for keywords. So like the algorithm or like the behind the backlog, all that electronic stuff, they look for keywords that will probably fit into that position. So you'll want on your resume like things if you're applying to become an engineer. You want keywords on your resume that say things like AutoCAD or environmental sustainability or intern or something like that. You want these specific keywords that way these algorithms can match what they want for that position. So if you're applying for like a environmental compliance, you'll want something like intern or air quality or good customer service, something like that. That way that algorithm could like bypass that and say, oh, based off of this position, it needs these types of skills. It needs this type of customer service. So if you have that on your resume, it'll take you to the next step saying automatically, oh, you made it to the interview process. So this is just some key takeaway things that you'd want on your resume. I'm not like a professional resume builder, but I do know that most than likely you'll be applying online and online has these algorithms that, you know, people don't really look at too much. You know, they receive hundreds of applicants, so they'll want some automated system that will look just for keywords that is beneficial for that position. Again, what I'm saying is just pure speculation. It's just based on my experience and I'm pretty sure that's how they do it nowadays that things are getting automated. So anyway, you think that overall the you know the environment and the world they work together. You think that the demand for environmental engineers or people who are trying to sustain the environment are like pretty high demand, right? But that's not always the case, especially in California here because we have very very strict regulations. But just because we have strict regulations doesn't mean that we're always going to have a job position open. And I learned that the hard way. Some states might even be less strict, so they might not even have any position at all. And realize though that Probably someone has that one position, but they want to keep that position. So that one spot that they have, they're going to keep it there for like 20 years and then maybe only until after they retire or if they ever leave, that's when that position will be open again. Because they don't really need that much people to work on it. Say you only need one like, you know, specialist or compliance officer to do that job. And then if he stays there for 20 years, then he's set for life for 20 years and you're still looking for, you know, 20 years. So it all depends on how many positions are actually open and, it, and probably depending on the environment and situation like that. It's not guaranteed that you will have this position because people already have it. They already have that spot taken. So you can do your Google searches on prospective job growth in the future. I don't think that it'll be growing that much unless there are like a super sudden change in the environmental regulations, like federal or statewide. Unless there are more laws or more strict laws coming out, I don't see that it'll be popping up new positions every single like second or so. It's not as popular as like technology in their field. But again, being an environmental engineer is important. It's just not going to be as popular as you know other fields. That's just my take on it. That's my current position. That's my experience with becoming an environmental engineer. At the end of the day, it was hard for me. So my personal experience is that I'm living in California, which has the highest regulations just as the environment. I had like a pretty hard STEM background, so of chemistry, switched on over to environmental engineering, got my master's, got my engineering training certificate. I'm not a professional engineer yet, but it still took me like six months. So I don't know if that's considered long or short with you guys, but it, to me, that's a long time. It took me six months, took me 300, over 300 applications, and it might be the same situation as you guys. Hopefully it doesn't take that long for you if you're ever watching this. I mean, it, it all depends on your experience maybe even the connections that you have. So if you have someone who's working in that field already, or you happen to be at a school with someone and they graduate and then they're like your mentor and then they worked in a whatever field, maybe you can go back to them and talk to them and say, hey, can you like hook me up? Or you know a place, can you recommend me or refer me to something? Again, it all depends on your connections and your experience, or maybe it could just depend on your location. So if you have like a pretty relaxed state that doesn't have so many enforced environmental regulations, then they probably won't need you as much. The demand for your position is probably low, so there might be only a few people in that state that does your job. So you might want to move to a different state that has like a you know potential growth in that position. So again, there are a whole lot of factors that can affect to see how fast you can get a job as an environmental engineer. This whole story was just my personal experience on my journey towards becoming an environmental engineer. And hopefully your guys' experience will be much easier. Still, the environment is here to stay. I mean, we humans, we have to work together with us and the environment around us. Everything that we do, you know, extracts resources. Everything, you know, whether it's business or any sort of potential growth for us, we have to 
use the environment in a way to help us, but we have to do that in a more sustainable way. And we environmental engineers, that's what we do. That's what we're trying to do. We have to, in a way, slowly degrade the environment to get what we want. We just have to think of methods to do it in a more sustainable and like better way without you know killing everything all at once. So yes, we're still going to be, in a way, ruining the environment, but we're doing it in the most efficient and effective way possible, as solely as possible. And that's what environmental engineers do. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how and what it takes to become an environmental engineer. It's not that easy, but it shouldn't be that hard either, depending on you know your connections, your experience, and how you really convey yourself as a person and try to you know communicate and work with other people. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next